Finally, Starship Block 2 has appeared. Just look at it. So gorgeous. But if you've been following the Starship program from the very beginning, you surely can't forget the early rough prototypes of Starship, right? Comparing those to the nose cone V2, it's clear that the transformation is truly incredible. Today, I'm here to take you through the fascinating journey of how SpaceX mastered the Starship's nose cone. What improvements have they made, and how do they signify the future of Starship? In fact, many images of the nose cone V2 have surfaced before. However, most of those images only showed bare shell, simple pieces of steel welded together into a cone shape. This indicates that they were still very basic in the finishing process. But then on the morning of July 14, 2024, a nearly complete nose cone V2 appeared, exciting the fan community. To achieve this milestone, SpaceX went through a long and challenging process. Why do I say that? Because the nose cone is a critical component. It's not just the front end of the spacecraft. The nose cone houses essential systems, protects valuable cargo, and shapes the aerodynamic dynamics of the entire vehicle. That's why SpaceX has continuously improved it, materials to manufacturing processes. The impressive nose cone we see today is not just the result of aesthetic enhancements. It is the product of numerous complex and sophisticated technical improvements. So, what did SpaceX do to create this remarkable chain? To understand, we need to look back at the development process of the nose cone, from the early days to the present. Let's take a look at Mark 1, the very first upper-stage prototype of Starship. Essentially, it's a collection of stainless steel plates crudely welded together. The result? Rough, conspicuous welds that look like scars on the metal surface. The nose cone wasn't even finished, and the forward flaps appeared to be slapped on just to make it look like it had flaps, attached in a just-make-sure-the-parts-don't-fall-off manner. Honestly, Mark I was quite rough in appearance. If it weren't for the shiny metal glint, it would look more like a do-it-yourself rocket model rather than a spacecraft. However, this was the first building block in the journey to create the most powerful launch vehicle humanity has ever built. The important thing here is that Mark I was never meant to soar into the skies. Its real purpose was to show how not to build Starship. It served as a visual lesson, a concrete example of what needed improvement. Mark I gave the SpaceX team an initial sense of the scale and complexity of the project they were about to undertake. It was a tool for building and training the workforce, establishing the basic infrastructure, and crucially, it was a powerful source of inspiration, a tangible image of ambition and future direction. Although it didn't look much like a spacecraft, Mark I laid the groundwork for many crucial strategic decisions that would shape the future of Starship. The most important was the bold choice to use stainless steel as the primary material, bucking the aerospace trend of aluminum alloys or carbon fiber. Furthermore, this prototype sketched out the basic components of Starship that we see in later prototypes. Now let's jump forward a year and see how far SpaceX came. Here we have Mark I and SN8 side by side, an incredible contrast. After several intermediate prototypes, SN8 was the first version with a complete nose cone and capable of a high altitude test flight. Comparing these two prototypes is truly impressive. While Mark I was a product of intuition and experimentation, SN8 embodies technological and engineering advancement. It looks sleek, elegant, and distinctly futuristic. Why did I choose SN8 for this comparison? Because it was the first prototype type to use 304L stainless steel, marking SpaceX's strategic shift from 301 304L type. The 304L steel allows for greater strength and heat resistance, which is essential for a spacecraft facing extreme temperatures during re-entry. Moreover, it has significant implications for the construction, assembly, and welding processes of Starship. Specifically, this change in construction material allowed SpaceX to shift from flux cord welding to the more advanced welding method, tip TIG. This was a significant technical leap. Tip-TIG welding is superior in every way. Higher precision, better heat control, and the creation of smooth, consistent weld. Looking at SNA, you no longer see the rough, jagged welds of Mark I. Instead, they appear much smoother, resulting in a seamless surface. This is what we call weld uniformity. This isn't just aesthetically pleasing. It's technically crucial. Why? Because sharp edges and tiny cracks in welds can act as stress concentrators, leading to a higher risk of fractures when Starship is pressurized or under load during flight. And here's another important point. Tip-TIG isn't just a manual welding process. It can also be automated, enabling SpaceX to accelerate production. Now take a look at the flaps on SN8. They are seamlessly integrated into the body, reflecting the design of the current Starship V1 flaps. This indicates that the flap design has remained consistent for four years, from SN8 to the present day. You see, SN8 marked a significant turning point in the development of Starship. It represented a new level of seriousness and effort from the SpaceX team. From a bold concept sketched on paper, through the rudimentary testing 
phase with Mark I, Starship evolved into a vehicle capable of performing complex test flights within a year. The technical improvements made during this time are still in use in current prototypes. Starship is a deep space vehicle, and to return, so it needs a heat shield. Several prototypes had been fitted with a few tiles, but it wasn't until SN20 that we saw a fully equipped heat shield, so even though it didn't fly, SN20 was the first upper stage V1 prototype with a fully installed heat shield. And then, we've witnessed four IFTs with V1 prototypes with a complete thermal protection system. And in the most recent test flight, Starship managed to survive re-entry and come back to Earth intact. What progress? Building on this progress, let's dive deeper into the remarkable innovations of Starship Block 2, especially through the lens of Ship 33's nose cone, a significant leap from Block 1. From an aesthetic standpoint, the Block 2 nose cone impresses immediately with its sleek, streamlined, and modern appearance. This isn't just a cosmetic upgrade. It's the result of profound technical advancements. The most noticeable changes are in the flaps. They are more compact and feature a different shape compared to Block 1. Notably, their position has been shifted forward and towards the leeward, wind-sheltered side of the ship. This strategic repositioning is a direct outcome of valuable lessons learned from Starship's test flights. This shift offers two major benefits. First, increased leverage which allows the flaps to control the ship's attitude more effectively during re-entry. And second, hinge protection, which hides the hinges from the scorching plasma flow during re-entry, preventing the plasma from infiltrating and damaging the flap structure. Furthermore, the new flaps appear significantly thinner, estimated to be only about half the thickness of the Block 1 flaps. It's not just the flaps. Related components like the shoulders, ribs, and aero covers are also more streamlined. This raises an intriguing question about their durability during the harsh re-entry process. You see, to withstand the aerodynamics, the framework of the flap structure needs to be strong enough to avoid breaking. It's not out of the question that to ensure their strength, SpaceX has used a newly developed stainless steel for their flaps. Regarding the thermal protection system, heat shield on the nose cone is nearly complete, with only a few small areas left uncovered. Notably, these heat shield tiles are made from a new material that is twice as strong as the previous generation. Another interesting detail is the glimpse of a thermal blanket behind some of the tiles. This suggests that SpaceX has adopted a hybrid approach to thermal protection, combining both thermal blankets and ablative materials as a secondary layer of defense tailored to the varying levels of heat each part of the spacecraft must endure. You know, the early prototypes were designed to be destroyed, created to prove the basic capabilities of the engines and hardware. By now, Block 1 has demonstrated Starship's ability to return. Far more than that, Block 2 has been created to serve the Artemis program, so things get much more serious. This is the time when every detail needs to be perfected, not just the hardware structures, but down to the smallest welds. The welding technique on Block Two has reached a new level of perfection. The welds have become so subtle that they are nearly invisible from a distance, showcasing the welding skills of the SpaceX team that have been elevated to an unprecedented level. This results in an extremely high weld uniformity, making Starship look almost identical to the rendered images Elon Musk has shown. In theory, each weld should be as strong as the surrounding metal. The smoother the weld surface, the higher the aesthetic quality, and it also ensures that the welds will not become weak points in the overall structure of the ship. Five years, so many improvements in five years. SpaceX is developing at an astounding pace. From a company that started building rockets without knowing how to build a rocket, they have become an industry leader with masterpieces of rocket science. Interesting, right? Do you have any suggestions for the next video topic? Feel free to leave a comment below.